Hi, I'm going to have a little walk around the platform today. Pull the intro and I'll show you what I mean. Hi, welcome to the channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Langers and what I'm trying to do is put trading in the real world. Maybe inspire your own trading and show you a thing or two along the way. So if that sounds good, click the little subscribe and bell icon, drop a comment below, or if you've got a query, by all means, email me. You'll find all my contact details in the description. So where we're up to? Well, the last few videos has been about trading a small account. And you have to go through the preliminaries before you get into the big leagues. It's just like anything else. You have to start small and build up. And I know straight away what you're after. You're after this. You ding dong! And possibly this. You suck the brains. <laughs> but if you don't start with the basics, what you're going to end up with is this. You ding dong! And possibly this. Matron, take them away! Oh. I, on the other hand, have worked for a long time. And I still have my own aspiration, which is this. Hello. Sorry. <laughs> You've got a dream, boys and girls. You've got a dream. And that's what trading is. To a lot of people, it's just a dream. And the idea of this channel and everything is to try and turn that dream into reality. And the only way it can be reality is doing it properly. And that means building it, learning it, and eventually trading it. So where we're up to, we, we figured out your whys and wants of trading, figured out that it's gonna start small, and when you start small, you have to build up. But in order to carry out all of this, you need a broker. And once you've got a broker, you need to figure out how the platform works and why it's there in the first place. And that's what we're going to do today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire up a, one of the brokers I use and just give you a basic overlay of what to watch out for on the screen. And then as the series goes forward, we'll start showing you what the indicators are, how where your levels are, what a candlestick is, what a line chart is, how to place an order, all, all the basic menial stuff. And then once that's all complete, you can test it, try it, and hopefully it puts you on the right road to success. You see, we're all trying to get to the same destination. We just use different roads. And that road wants to be called, as I've just said, success. I don't want any of you guys to fail. I really don't. Popeye can fail. He can go and shove it. You suck! <laughs> but for the good guys out there, if I can help you, I will. Isn't that logical? So I got my coffee, because we all know Scruffy needs a coffee, and he does need one today because it's been a rough week. You know, it's been a long week this week. And let's jump on and see what we can find. Okay, guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a quick overview of a platform. They all work roughly the same. And it's just a way for you to execute your business and carry out your trade. Now, if you haven't had a broker before, they're very easy found. You just fill in a few personal details, give a little bit of identification and fill out a compliance questionnaire. It's just so they know you know what you're doing. That's all. And once you open it up, they're all much of a muchness. Some are a little bit more user friendly than others. Some are cheaper than others, hence why I have multiple brokers. 
I use IG because it is very user friendly and they all my charting for you. And Intertrader CMC markets are a little bit cheaper to operate because their spreads are a bit tight. And the reason I have multiple is I never carry all my eggs in one basket. One broker might be down, I've got two that can back up, that sort of thing. So what do you look at? Well, the first thing you're going to be wanting is what can I trade? Well, that's very easily set out for you and it's broken into various categories. You have your indices, you know, your FTSE, your Wall Street, the S&P 500, that sort of thing. That's all found under indices. Your Forex, again, it's broken into categories for you. You'll normally deal with the majors. These are the most liquid markets. And if you're new to trading, you'll find there's a lot of terminology to get your head around. You don't need to know it all, as long as you understand what you're looking at. And these terms are the majors, which is this lot here. You have the minors, which is these ones here. And the difference is, these are very liquid, these are not so liquid. It's the movement of market. In other words, how far it can move in a day. Then it goes down right the way through your exotics. You'll normally only stay amongst these. You've got your cryptocurrencies. Not a big on the cryptos. Shares. Basically, if a company is on a stock exchange, it is a share. And you can buy into that. And you can trade whatever is your favorite company. You might like Facebook, so trade Facebook. And I'll do a video of how to siphon them down because there is thousands of them. You then have your commodities, your oils, your gold, etc. Uh, I don't go a lot into commodities. I do trade gold. I do trade oil. And I trade a soft commodity, which is coffee. There's a shocker. No other reason than it's a good directional market. Okay. You've got your bonds and your rates. Your ETFs, ETFs are a good vehicle. They're like a basket of stocks all bonded together and then you can trade it as a single entity. And then your options. And again, I don't look at options too much. But they're all very easy to navigate. And that's what the broker wants. It wants you to be easy to navigate because they're not wanting to lose you. They want you to keep trading. And the reason they want to keep you trading is they get paid by the spread. Okay. So now you've decided that you're going to trade an instrument. Um, cable, for argument's sake. Right. Cable is the Great British Pound versus the US dollar. Uh, a lot of the currencies have strange little nicknames. And what you will initially see is something like this. And a chart as it pulls up is two dimensional. You have a time axis and you have a price axis. And it becomes three dimensional when you put on a trade. But how do you know when to trade? This is the key point. Because you don't just rock up, switch your broker on and think, right, well, there's a, there's a deal ticket. I'm just going to sell it. You need to do a little bit of technical analysis on it or at least have an idea of what you're doing before you go and place your order. And the brokers give you these tools to work with. So with this one, you can have multiple tabs. So you can have all different tabs up here and use them for different things. Well, I chop and change them all the time. They will give you the ability to look at a market on multiple time frames on a single screen. Now, if you don't have the benefit of having screens like what I do, you can do it all on a single screen. You know, it's great having multiple screens, but sometimes that's just not feasible. Right? So what they'll do is they'll give you something like this. So it'll break up the chart. So this is a single product. You put your daily. Here, your whoop, that didn't work, did it? I put it back where I always put it. I always leave it up there so that it's out the way and I can still get all of my deal tickets. 
15 minute and a one hour. So what's this telling me now? Well, it's show me what the daily is. It's show me what the four hour is, the one hour and the 15. And I can now start to make some decisions. So there's the daily. I can see it's dropped down and it's bouncing off this area. And you can see that nice and clear. And I can also see that it's had a reversal here and it's stalled here. So that gives me an area of interest, which is there. That's it. Another one there. And there is one above it, which is there. You can see the price has come down, bounced strongly away from it, and it is prior. So that's just give me two areas of attraction, all right? And the price is boxed between the two. What does that mean at this moment? It doesn't mean anything. It just means I know there's two solid levels that has reacted in the past, there and there. So I look at the four hour, and I can put something on as simple as a moving average. 20 period moving average. And I'll go through these more and more as time moves forward. But basically it means it's looking 20 periods back on the time frame I'm looking at. In other words, 20 of these candles. And I can see clearly prices trading above that 20. So I've got a theory here that the price has moved down, it's bounced off, and it is pushing up. And I can see it clearly here because it has broken this support and resistance line, an area of interest, and is gradually moving up to the next one. See that here. So I have a bias of long or up. This moving average is now confirming that bias by telling me price is still staying above and pushing up. Good. So I can drop it to the one hour, put the same moving average on. Now this is looking 20 hour periods back and I can see it is still pushing up working to here. So from these three charts, I have kind of a confirmation bias that I'm going long. And then all I need to do now is look on my 15 minute chart to enter. And I can look at this and think, right, okay, I can safely enter above this candle here. Why? Because it is the highest of the last five or the last three. Because I don't want to just do it willy-nilly. I want the market to come to me. So if I work from a high point, I can go from there to there. Transact the trade. So now I've got a theory as to why I'm going to take a trade, I need to carry out that trade. Now if I take this back to an execution chart, or a chart that I'm going to trade on, it would be this one. Okay. And we just decided that the, the play is above here to there. So that's my target. Right. Pull that down. So this is where your deal tickets come into. Brokers being brokers want you to trade like this and want you to do it a lot. So we put lots of flashy lights on. And if you notice, when I flick this up, the first one was daily. Because I want you to click that. If I click that, I'm in. In like Flynn. I've got no other choice. I'm in the market. I don't look at it at all. I've also switched off one click. Because one click again, it just gets you in and gets you out instantly. You need time to compose yourself. So I prefer orders. Okay. Now, the deal is exactly the same as that one. If I click buy, first deal, bump, I'm in at whatever price this can get me. Okay. Whereas the order, I have to set the price level. And like we've just said, I want to be above this candle here. So I'm looking to get in at about 
there you are, one, one, three, or five, two, spot zero. Okay, so that's what you do. You can set your level there. It's nice and composed, like a wave. Put my target in onto that line. Put my stop just below there. And then you have to start thinking, is this trade worth it? Why do I, why would I think it's worth it? Well, in this case, you'd have to think long and hard because it is almost one to one, but it's more in favor of losing than it is of winning. Whereas if you had your target up here, this becomes a two to one trade. So if you're right, you're going to get a lot more money than you will if you are wrong. But base your trade on the bit that you can control. You don't know how far that market's going, right? but you can control how far it can go against you with a hard stop. And that's what this is. Okay? If it moves that far, that's how much that trade costs you. Simple as that. All right? Then you just have to manage the trade thereafter. So how do you build this all up? Well, there's a number of things you can do. So you set your price, which is here, and it'll tell you the minimum transaction deal. So we're dealing with a 200 pound account. This whole series is about small account growth, and it will cost you 217.32. So you can't trade this market. You haven't got enough money. All right. So this takes you back to building a watch list of products that you can, because if you were looking, say, at the FTSE, that would cost 150. So you could afford that. So that would be in your watch basket, whereas this one won't, because you can't afford it. All, right. All makes sense in a minute. But let's just say you had 300 pounds in your account, and you can afford to open this trade. What does this margin represent? Well, all it represents is how much money you need to open the account. So if you only had £230 in your account, I still can't really open this because the second the market moves against you, you're going to get what's called a margin call. And if you haven't come across a margin call before, it's just the amount of money that you need to kind of put up as collateral against the trade that you're going to take. And as the price moves against you, your margin increases and therefore it eats up the amount of money you have in your fund. And if the margin exceeds your fund amount, so in this case 230, may require 235 pounds in order to transact the current price, you'll get what's called a margin call. And you've got a couple of choices at this point. You can either close the trade off at a loss and just be done with it. You can close part of the trade off, take a little bit of a loss, but put so much margin back, which allows you to carry on the rest of the trade, or you simply put more money into the brokerage. Then the choices is yours. If you don't, the broker will make the choice for you and they'll just close the trade off and then you've lost. You're better off doing it yourself and it helps with your psyche. Okay. Now, once all of this is afforded and one thing and another, these areas come into play because you can have a normal stop. And basically, when the price gets to here, the broker will take you out and you pay off the loss. So if you lose £20 out of your 200 you're left with 180 But sometimes the market moves a little bit too quickly for the broker, flash crash for example, and they'll try and get you out at the best price. And instead of it being £20 loss, it could be 23 because that's how long it took to catch the price. But you can use a guaranteed stop and what a guaranteed stop is is exactly what it says it is 
their guarantee that if you say you stopped at 20, you will stop at 20. And that is it, you know, very, very simple. And then once the trade is up and running, you can have a trailing stop where it will move the stop up as the price goes in your favor, locking in profits as well. Okay. So it's actually a very simple way to trade, and it is simple, it really is. But what they want to do in order to continue with the simplicity is help you trade. The more you trade, the more they make money. But they also want to keep you. And they, and they actually prefer a profitable trader to a losing trader because you'll stay a long time and you'll trade over and over. And they get their spread, the difference between the sell and the buy price. Okay. So what they do is they give you tools like alerts. Why would I want an alert? Well, if I have a multitude of accounts, for argument's sake, I've got a good size account, and I'm looking at all of these and all of these. Well, there's like 28 pairs there to, to be looking at. It's like, bloody hell. To analyze all of them on a day is very difficult. So you can set an alert up to pick out the ones that you want to analyze. And it's very simple. So you can see, right, on a four hour chart, if I'm looking at say a Bollinger Band, which is what that is. I want to know every time it is outside the Bollinger Band. And I want to know at the end of the candle, and I want to know every time it does it. And then just put in there, here like that. Now what that'll do, every time this market is outside the Bollinger Band, on a four hour market, this will send a message to my phone saying, look fat boy, get yourself on the screen. We need to have a look at this. Save me bouncing through all the different types. Nice and simple, good tool. Then they give you God knows how many indicators. Well, we've just said a Bollinger Band, so you can put your Bollinger Band on. You can put your RSI on. All these little things that we're going to discuss, then they'll give you drawn tools, as you've just seen. So you can draw areas of interest. And they do it all for you to keep you interested. If you're interested, you'll stay on the platform. If you're on the platform, you will trade. If you trade, they make money. And that's all the platform's for. You know, at the end of the day, it is a business. Okay. So I hope that all kind of makes sense. Um, by all means, drop some comments below. I'll do my best to get back to you. And if you like this sort of stuff, click the subscribe button. But remember, guys, do what you love and money will follow. See you all in the next one.